Hey, g'day again. Right, we're uh, up to the next stage of this. Yeah. As you can see, we've got our 10 manifold tubes in. They are a little closer to the fan than I would like it. This side has a little bit of clearance. The other side doesn't have any. Um, the other side there yeah, is a little bit tight. And I think we'll be okay here, but the issue now will be that the bolt holding the fan in, I think, is going to get in the way. Anyway, I can't actually get it in there at the moment. Because we don't have clearance on the oil filler, oil filler generator holder. So... I don't know we need that much. I think what I'm going to do now is take that off and just see if I can take a couple of mils off that because I don't need, I don't need a couple of mil. Or there's the other option is to put a cut in this, then in a little bit. Yeah, it's probably a better option actually. Yeah, it won't interfere with it. there's plenty enough flow in there to it's not gonna be an issue. Yeah I think I'll do that. No, I don't want to take that off take that off anyway. Okay I'll take the fan off and I'll mark what that is. Cut a little bit. Yeah. We're gonna have to come in a couple of mil. Make enough clearance to get past there. actually get it on because you can't just drop it straight down you have to come in under it but yeah like once the fans off okay um, thinking you know like instead of cutting all this I've actually got an issue here don't mention that in cutting this I've actually dropped it down more than it should have. It's still overlapping, but yeah, not as much as it should. But yeah, I can't see it being an issue. I said I will up these holes and things, these with the heater controls, and I'll fill that in again. Um, all right, I still haven't put the tubes in here either. Got a little bit of an issue with one of the tubes on the other side, one lines up. Nicely, the other one's a bit tight, so I'm going to have to uh, take the plug out. I think I'll get an old spark plug and bust the top off it so that I can you know, put the socket in the spanner in there, line it up with the plug, see where it's hitting, and then pull it out a little bit and yeah, tweak it till i got clearance. So, yeah, no great drama. Yeah, you notice, yeah, then I folded these in, so got these prepared, and, you know, this, this is three mil steel, that tube's inch and a half, you can't bend three mil tube around inch and a half tube, all you can do is cross the tube, so, yeah, I found another bit of, this is, this is motorcycle full tube. That's heaps thick, won't bend that. Put a couple of dings in it, but yeah, it's not getting used again anyway. Well, not for motorcycle tube. So, yeah. Put a few cuts in there, and I'll fully weld and clean, clean all them up before I even tack it on. Of course, there'll be a top going on that. Notice, now I haven't cut the top off. Yet. I'll be cutting like I'm not going to cut right on the edge either I'm going to drop it down at the bottom of the round and because uh, I'll fold these corners three corners in as well or six corners so it meets the same but yeah that just yeah like bring it down it just 
gives it a rounded corner, probably more for appearance than anything else. But yeah, you can see if you notice I didn't cut that right off. And that's because I had this part clamped in the vise. And once I cut it off, then I've got an issue cutting these long lengths because the vise is trying to clamp it together. Sometimes when you cut long lengths, they'll actually pull together anyway and they'll jam up the angle grinder. So you, you watch when you, you start cutting, you know, by the time you get halfway, you'll be able to see whether it's going to spread or, you know, clamp in or stay as it is. So fortunately, this one actually spread, so that was a good thing. But yeah, that's the reason why I haven't cut that off yet, because I wanted it in the bias. Yeah, they cut those long lengths, and you can see. Yeah. Yeah, you can get all these bits. It's far easier to clean when it's like that, when it's still attached to the bit, to the main piece, and in the vice to scrub the paint off than it is to do once you get it off. So, mind you. The other thing I've done is I've beveled the edges and I'll bevel the edges of that before I attempt to weld it back on and it's also been in the sandblaster. Yeah. Got rid of all that scaly rust off it. Be out a bit, I'll clean up later after I finish welding it. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so that's where we're up to. Oh, something that yeah, the only thing I want to mention. See this silicon spray. I was having an issue with the fire clogging, and not only does it slow down your your, your progress in a job that takes a long time anyway. You know, a lot of elbow grease. Um, when you get to it, you have know, finished product. When you've got it down level and everything. Those chunks of metal that are staying in the file are putting big scratches in it. So you want it clean when you're, you know, doing the, you know, the, the, the final cut across it, yeah, the final clean up. So because I'm, yeah, if you haven't watched the previous video, I was talking about filing the underside of these flanges on the pipe yeah, for sale. Yeah, get them flat so that they seal. Alright, leave it at that. And, uh, yeah. Next time we should see the, uh, loose the mixing chamber, the joiner, fully attached. Possibly a lid on. Uh, yeah, I might put a lid on it. I do have the carbies, just the carbies that are going on it. Or one of them. This is a 3236, and uh, these actually belong to my other son, and uh, I was contemplating buying them off him, but yeah, they're pretty chronic, and uh, so, like they've been sitting in the bottom shed, he hasn't even seen them for 10 years, so. and uh, yeah, what, yeah, this, this piece, yeah, depend on, on whether they're complete and whether how well they clean up as to whether I actually buy one of these carbies of him. That's even if he wants to sell them to me too. He has an issue in that he wants top dollar for everything he owns, even if it's rubbish. Yeah. Anyway, see how we go, but yeah, at least for the moment, mate, I can borrow it, I can make the fitting. That's the main thing I need right now. Yeah. The fitting to so I can bolt that down on the mud onto the manifold and then another fitting to come top to join up with my other air filter. So, if you haven't seen this before, this is one I made up to go on the Stromberg. It's a bit loose. I found a bit of rubber in amongst my junk pile. I keep all sorts of things that might be interesting. That fitted on there, and then this is 75 mil PVC downpipe, and uh, yeah, for the pod filter. 
had this hanging off the fan cowling just to, as a water deflector. So only that's the only issue we get with those sort of filters. They'll draw water in, you know. So yeah, I've had those on motorbikes, and you, you ride in the rain, you stay up in issues. So yeah, so I made that up to deflect water off it. Yeah, so as I said, I've got a... Oh, that's plenty enough airflow for the Calby, so 75 mil. So I'll make them another plate that'll bite on top of the Calby that'll fit nicely into there. And, uh, yeah, won't need a clamp or anything. Like these clamps are on it. I've also got brackets on the, on the fan cowling to hold it up. sits on top of there and then the hose clamp hose clamp goes around to them just holds it in place tucks in here this is where that water deflector sits so I'll use, yeah, I'll use that whole thing again just make a new fitting for it so. alright well, there we go uh, yeah and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.